you know a Guy Ritchie movie when you see it. And um, I'm just super curious, like, what are some of the things that kind of stood out during the um, filming process? We just heard the door knock at the back of the van and it was Guy the first time we've properly seen him. So he's coming and gone, all right, wait, um, forget the scripts. Um, what do you want to call yourself? You're listening to Studio 22. Welcome to Studio 22. I'm Brock O'Hearn. I'm sitting here with my co-host, Will Meldman, and we are sitting with one of my great friends, Sean Sagar. Yes. Glad to be here. Welcome, brother. Yes. Thank you, bro. It's, it's amazing to be here. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Looking forward to diving in. Yes. Let's do it. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Yeah, man. And, and you're coming from London. Yes. From yeah. London. So coming yeah. over here from London is a, is a massive change. I yeah. just feel like it's, it's a completely different place to to London. London's very small, super busy, whereas over I feel it's a lot more laid back and chilled. And you kind of have to pick your spots. So coming from London to Vegas or London to LA, it's just like, whoa, this is different. Mm. But it's the most inspiring place for me to, yeah, by far. Yeah, I feel like London's got a little more like New York in it, probably, yes, right? Yes, yes. Everyone says that New York's the, the, the dad version of London. It's just the bigger version. Right. And everyone I know from London that's been New York has says, it's just a better version of London. So I, mm. I want to go. I, I want to I wanna experience it. See, I think London's a better version of New York, but that's just Do me. you? Oh, yeah. That's Big crazy. Time. That's the first time I've heard that. Usually it's people <laughs> saying that New York is better, but that's usually because I speak to people from London. So right. they were always like, nah, New York's better because when you're from a place, you kind of get used to it. So yeah. when you go somewhere new, you're like, yo, this is crazy. This is so much better. Yeah, Grass is always greener. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> I always think about that here in LA too. It's, is I'm so used to living in LA. I've been here almost a yeah. decade now and I, and I love it. I, and there's just so much to do and you can go at your own pace. You know, you can be chill yeah. or it can be crazy. It's yeah. whatever you want yeah. it to be. And you can work as much as you want really. But um, when I go other places, man, I'm like, yeah, it's a little slow here. It's a little boring. It doesn't have, you know, everything that this city, at least for, you know, someone who's also an actor mm -hmm. that I want and crave and, and think I need almost to a degree to, you know, not only work on my career, but for my own lifestyle yeah. choices, you know? 100%. This is, uh, I feel like it's, it's something, especially within our career and our line, our line of work, where when you come here, everything else just aligns with it. So it's like, since I've been here, I've never trained as much as I have done mm. being back home. And I just feel like because the energy of here is so for our career as well, in a very mm. creative space, I feel like you instantly feel like you have to do more, which is a nice feeling. But at the same time, it's like what you said, if you want to just chill, you can just chill. Do you know what I mean? So it's got the best of both worlds if yeah. you want it. Yeah, it's an interesting kind of take on it for sure. I I definitely find LA incredibly inspiring. Mm. Um, and sometimes it's like almost too much energy yeah. emanating from the city where it's yeah. like, if you're here too long, it's like, okay, I got to go take a weekend in Santa Barbara, or, you know, yeah. get out of the city somehow. But Loads of people have said that and I never understood it at first, but... I kind of made up this only little analogy in my head of like, LA is a place where everyone automatically comes here with this excited energy. It's LA, it's Hollywood. So you're already excited, one, just to be here. Two, it's then exciting because it's, it's a step closer in with your craft to see how it all works at like the big end. And I just feel like everyone that comes here is already so excited and like welled up. So that's why I feel like the energy is super high. So that when you then come, you're like, whoa, this is a lot. I need a break. I need like a two day break somewhere, even a hotel or a little chalet in the corner somewhere just <laughs> yeah. away from everyone. But I feel like it's just because the energy has to be high here because that's what it's been built on is this fantasy and this, this amazing place of high energy of people that yeah. do well. So you instantly have to, to keep that up. Yeah. You know competition. I mean? yeah. It's, I think it's also a place that, you know, some of the highest achievers and, and mm. innovators and, and yeah you know, first adapters, whatever you want to call them, some of the greatest talent in Hollywood either live here, work here, come through here. Uh, one way or another, I feel like almost everyone comes to LA at some point in their career yeah. if they're not already here. You know? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I feel like the, the, the step from London is that for you to be looked at and taken seriously as an actor is to come here. I feel like you can do as many jobs in the UK as you want. Amazing stuff, but you really get respected when you come over to LA and you do an American production. Whereas if you just keep doing British productions, you're looked at as, oh, okay, but you ain't made it in America. And I'm like, no, I just want to stay here. So it's always looked at as when you come here, this is the next step. 
And like, it's the next step that will be able to found and that you'll be able to build the foundation for your life leading for your future. So I feel like that's also why the energy is a bit like, yo, we're here, we're here. Do you know what I mean? Is um, in London, I guess England as a whole or London specifically, but I've, you know, kind of read about and heard about um, like when you're training as an actor and kind of coming up, mm. um, there's a lot of theater, right? Loads. And, and I feel like that's a huge advantage to be like doing theater, um, kind of growing up with it, right? I'm not not like based off your last statement, just kind of yeah. more of like a, you know, coming up in that space. Yeah, I feel like um, theater is a massive learning um, experience being an actor because I, I never trained or anything. So the only bit of training I feel like I've ever done in my career is the two theater projects that I did. And it's just because there's no better feeling than being on a stage performing your lines where you only get to do it once. If you mess up, it's only you that knows you've messed up. So I've messed up before on stage and I came out on my cue, but they'd said my line that was at the end of the scene. <laughs> oh, so I've man. come out at the start, but said the line that was meant to be at the end of the scene. And my, my co-star looked at me like, and I was like, <laughs> and I just found myself naturally in the moment, just trying to claw my way back. But on, I felt like I was on stage for about four hours. I was probably yeah. there for about 15 seconds. I was just yeah. like, <laughs> but it was, it's also because I feel like the, the, the tri and New York also has a massive um, theater, um, you know, um, space. But in terms of London, it's just built into you through training. For all the actors that I know that train, they get trained, you know, the, the thespian way. And then also just, tapping into different different part of your crafts that you wouldn't necessarily do if you hadn't trained. And I just feel like theatre allows you to be free. It also allows you to, you know, realise that you can do a take in one so that when you then come on to do mm. the screen, you're like, oh, I get 10 takes of this. Right. Or I get three takes or, well, some of them anyway, because I just finished a job where you don't get no 10 takes. It's just one take, boom, you're out. And I'm like, whoa, this is, it's intense. But because of theatre, it helped me to do that. So um, yeah, I think the theatre space in London is a, is a real important um, stepping stone for actors over there. Yeah, yeah. I felt that way. I mean, I did theatre when I was twelve. Mm. Uh, that was the first of my real introduction into it. And at I at twelve. Yeah, young. Yeah, it was with the school and everything. But um, well, just to segue back to that part a little bit, I played Jack from Jack and the Beanstalk, and I had like a one-page <laughs> singing monologue. <laughs> it was insane. And halfway through, I forgot the lines. And so I was just standing there like, uh, you know, and then like making it up a little bit, but it's that same thing where I think obviously everyone knew I messed up because yeah. there was too much dead space, but yeah. then also, and then I knew I messed up. And so I was even more nervous on top of that. But, um, oh, I, I learned a lot nerves. though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You learn a lot. And I, you learn I feel like it also just allows you to understand that it's okay to mess up. And yeah. as long as you can mess up and, and rectify that situation and make it, make it right then it's kind of like life. Do you know what I mean? Life, you can make a mistake. As long as you know how to then make it right, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And I feel like, obviously, in the moments when you go quiet for too long, you're like, <laughs> okay, everyone's noticed, everyone's noticed. But if you can bring it back, people forget about it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's interesting. It must it go on. Yeah, it must go on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I know I've been there. Yeah. Yeah, but it's that. it reminds me of that scene from... Uh, like, uh, from Troy with Achilles, and he's like, "That's why no one will remember your name." Yeah, yeah. Like, I'll do it. I'll do whatever it takes. Yeah, man. you know, it I is, mean? and it, it is a thing of that. And I feel like us as actors, it's like we finish a take, and in our head we'll go home and be like, "Was that okay? Was that good enough? Could I have done this? Could I have changed that?" When in actual fact, it's more of a thing of like, if you know you gave your best, and you know in the moment whatever came out felt real, then mm -hmm. that's it. And my thing was, no notes is good notes, and I learned this from young, where it's like. A director has so much going on on a set. So it's like, if he has no notes for you, you're not in his head for something that's gone wrong. Yeah. Right. So you just, if they're happy and they move on, it's like, cool, he's got the shot or she's got the yeah. shot. That's all right. But I feel like once you get notes, sometimes it's not looked at as a bad thing. It's just maybe a different avenue you can take to approach that scene. And when I was younger, I used to be like, oh, when I got notes, I was like, oh, they don't think I'm good enough. And da 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 da. Yeah, my my first show I ever did and film was with Tyler Perry, right? Yeah. So I, I had never acted before besides like a play when I was 12, right? But I knew that's what I wanted to do. That's I knew that's why I had to move to LA. I just, I just had to pursue it because mm -hmm. it was in me, you know? Mm -hmm. And I did that and, you know, it wasn't until learning other people's roles, learning what the director does, learning what the producers do, learning, you know, even the grips and, and gaffers, yeah. everyone outside of it, how everyone has such a specific and, and unique role that plays into the, you know, the 
teamwork that yeah. it takes to build something where yeah. I was like, oh dude, acting is like, although it's the show, yeah. it's that much. Yeah. It's a, it's yeah. 10%, it's 1% yeah. of what it takes to actually do it. And then it took me out of it. So when the, the first three, five, eight takes went wrong and yeah. I'm thinking it's me, it turned into, oh, you know, the guy wasn't in focus yeah. or, you yeah. know, or the lighting wasn't right or this moment, yeah. whatever. It's, or it's, sound or props or exactly. this and that. And it's like, the, it, it and kind of makes you realize you got a, not think it's not that we do, but not think it's all about you, which yeah. I've always tried to take that approach on set where it's like everyone here is just important, just as important. And I feel like sometimes actors get the, this, this thing on their shoulders where it's like, no, we are. And it's like, well, if you're not lit properly, no one sees you. If your mic ain't on, no one hears you. So it's like, right. and also it's always this thing where like actors will come on and have a little moan. Well, in actual fact, we're probably last in and first out. There are people there from hours before you mm -hmm. and hours after you leave. And it's, yeah. it's just knowing that having all of these people around you who are also employed for a specific job to just have that mutual respect of we're all professionals and we're all here to create this piece of art together. Do you know what I mean? I can have the paint, but if I ain't got the canvas, then what's the point? So it's like, it's just allowing yourself to understand it ain't about you, but just believe what you do is good enough to be there. I feel like that's what I had to keep telling myself, with the, especially with these past two jobs that I've done, because they're probably the biggest jobs I've done in my career so far. So it was, it was interesting, but again, I learned a lot. And yeah, the growth is, is just a nonstop thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I like, I love the no notes is good, yeah. um, like theory, because, you know, I was like growing up as like a production assistant and then, you know, a producer, I, I feel like absolutely the more notes you're kind of given, the more they're, trying to change it up. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not a director, so I wouldn't know like that space intimately, but you know, as a production assistant, you might come in a little earlier, but you also don't have 200 people looking at you and you know, the incredibly expensive cameras and you know, like you don't, you get, you get to kind of like hide in the corner while the, while the actors bring the magic. Yeah. Right. And it, it is really interesting. Like all the different, yeah jobs on a set because every piece does have to go in perfectly yeah it's all all the pieces fit the puzzle it's like every piece of this is a puzzle and it's like yeah. the end the end project and the end the end you know the end image is why we all need to come together and work together because without this piece that piece ain't gonna work so it's like as long as we can all come together and respect each other professionally then it's cool and i feel like well for me anyway i don't know about all other actors but i feel like you can be on set with 200 people. The, the, the craziest thing is the only thing that intimidates you or you know is there is the camera. Right. You never really noticed anyone else behind. It's only really that's the thing that's yeah. in your head. When So now I'm trying to take this approach of, in my career, of treating the lens just like any other person. So it's like, if I'm not noticing the grip that's over there or the person holding the boom, why am I noticing that? Mm. So yeah. it's just trying to, China, and again, it's not, for, I was never trained. So every job for me is another acting lesson. So I'm just trying to bring in different approaches that allow me to feel more comfortable and free and just trying new things. Do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, it is interesting. It is crazy. Hell yeah. I think there's definitely a healthy pressure when it comes to the cameras or eyeballs on you. Or yeah. Maybe it depends on how you react to it. But uh, for me too, I think obviously like us having all these cameras here, I don't yeah. even feel these anymore. Yeah. You know? And same thing when I get on set too, it's my, my only intention is how can I now make this the most believable, yeah. as believable as possible yeah. give everything I have to this scene, be in the moment and then move yeah. on from there. Yeah. Cause it's like an audition. It's like a scene, you know, so many times I'm, I, I'll question if that was good or not, or, mm. or I want to take one more mm. take or whatever it may be. And I just want to make sure I leave everything out there. So when I walk away, just like you were saying, there's nothing left for me to yeah. think about because yeah. I gave everything. Gave I everything. Had. Yeah. yeah. I feel like more times you question yourself if you know you feel like there was something that you could have done. Not necessarily. Not necessarily saying it would have been better, but it's just a different option or a version. You could be like, yeah. oh, okay, I could have maybe have tried it that way. But if you could do that with everything, so I'm like, totally. yeah. whatever's in the moment. As long as the director says, "Yep, I'm happy. Let's move on." You've got it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So I feel yeah. like it's just about trusting yourself. That's the main thing. Believing in yourself, believing in whatever comes out in that moment was meant to, and also believing in your director, because I feel like that has a massive impact on where you go with what story you're trying to tell. And it was really important that you said that because we have to be in the moment. Anything we deliver has to be within that moment. Otherwise it's not going to make sense. Or 
it won't seem real. And that's when you go, ah, okay, you're acting here. Because yeah. it just doesn't seem yeah. natural. And it's like, as long as you can be in the moment and just let free and in, and really and truly embody that character, whatever that character chooses to do there and then, that's it. So just trust it, believe it, and just run with it and have fun. Our job is fun. It's fun. You get it's to go fun, on a yeah. set and pretend to be someone else with a hint of you in it. Yeah. So it's like, what a better job, do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's been fun since being out here. I'm, I'm yeah. looking forward to the, the, the steps that I had. Hell yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely never boring and you never nah. know what's going to happen next. We were talking about yeah. that earlier today, yeah. you know, whether it's an audition or a role, like uh, I can get a call tomorrow and I'll be gone. You know, even mm. I am going to be gone tomorrow. But or like just yeah. happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um, that's one of the most exciting, fun things about it is, is I never know what skill set I'm going to learn. I yeah. never know uh, what I'm going to look like tomorrow. Yeah. You know, I never yeah. know what's, what call Handle I'm going to get. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like I got this letter uh, in the mail, um, from this last production I did with with Hulu with mm. uh, Nick Kroll, Mel Brooks, ever it's and the cast was it was we would love you to join the cast with, you know, with Jack Crazy. Black and Emily Ratajkowski and that like we we were big fans of your work and it was like this thing where I like I was like I have to frame this dude and yeah this is a moment yeah. of just like not only do these people know who I am yeah. but they like my work and they want to work and you're with about me to work with them as well it, it was mind blowing yeah. dude yeah. And, and and I'm just so grateful for the opportunity but it's something that one of those moments where doesn't matter where my career takes me where my life takes me yeah i'm never gonna forget that you yeah know? it was the, i had that moment with a film i did a film called the gentleman which was um was, a guy who beat me to it oh we all yeah, know man yeah, no, know. it was it was it was the most at that time in my life and probably till this day and i think probably forever it was the most surreal phone call i've had from my team it was i remember being outside this like chicken wing place in um in a place called essex back home in london and um i remember getting a phone call I was at the uh, dinner table with all my friends. I was like, yo, let me just, I got my agent. So I walked outside and they're like, hey, Sean. I'm like, hey, how's it going? And they're like, uh, just to let you know, we've got, yo, so my American manager who was then linked into the call as well. So like, we've got Lena on the phone. I was like, okay. I was like, what have I done wrong? Because <laughs> instantly my, I hadn't done an audition for like a month prior to this phone call. So I was like, oh, so whenever you get a phone call from all your agents, it's either you've booked a job or you've done something wrong on a job. And I was yeah. like, Oh, what have I done wrong? I was like, no. And they went, oh, just to let you know, Guy Ritchie wants to offer you the role. And I froze. I froze on the phone. I was like, I was like, this guy. They were like, Sean? I said, yeah, 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 I'm still here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And they were like, yeah, just to let you know, he wants to offer you the role. And I was like, what job? Because I auditioned for it so long ago, I forgot what it was called. And it yeah. wasn't called The Gentleman at that stage. It was called Bush. That was the original name. Um, because Bush representing the weed. So, um, oh, okay. yeah, so that's why it was called, because Bush was an old school thing that in London you called like weed or whatever you would, it was like, oh, yo, can you get me some Bush? It Wait, was that's old school, awesome. Yeah, it was <laughs> an old school term for it. So, um, so then they turned around and were like, yeah, just to let you know, it'll be Matthew McConaughey, Hugh Grant, and I again <laughs> froze, just went, oh. <laughs> so they kept going, Sean, are you there? This time I didn't answer because I was still in shock. So I come off the phone. I remember just standing outside this chicken shop and I was like, this is something I never dreamt of happening. And it was just a moment where I had to take it in by myself and just be like, you're good enough to be here. These moments are, are coming your way because you know, you've, you've believed in it, you've manifested it. And I feel like the way we approach life mentally has such a big impact on what actually happens face to face. I feel like if you, you know, if you're negative about things, that's all you're going to attract. Yep. And I feel like if you're, if you're positive, when that negative does happen, you'll find a way to see that as to be in a lesson as to what's to come. And I remember going back into the, the place, sat opposite my friends and I didn't say nothing. I was just still there like, yo, Matthew McConaughey, me. I was like, oh my God, yes. And they were like, you booked a role. And I went, yeah. And they were like, what? So when I told them, they knew the, the height of it because of who Guy Ritchie was of and all course. of these people. So we all just started throwing chicken wings. It just got crazy <laughs> in this place. And then I turned up on set and um, Black Ritchie, um, Black Ritchie, Guy Ritchie does this thing <laughs> called a black box read through. And basically what that is, he hires out of space. He put, obviously puts up his black curtains around and has two cameras set up like a theater production. So you basically start the script from start to finish, but playing it out as if you're playing it to the cameras. And we didn't realize at the time, but we found that it was kind of another audition. So mm -hmm. we've got the part, but now we've got them. We're like, oh my God, I'm seeing everyone here. And I remember just hearing something next to me. It was just like a hum, nothing crazy. 
And I remember looking down and Matthew McConaughey is just sat on the floor, just humming. I think he was like humming a song. It wasn't a thing like in, in what it was. Yeah. He was just humming. I thought, it, I thought he was doing that. And I was like, and I looked and I was like, oh my God, that's Matthew McConaughey. And I looked down, I was like, you all right? He was just like, you right? I was like, oh shit. I was like, okay, what do I do here? What do I do? Just play cool, play cool, play cool. Yeah. The whole time I was trying to play it cool. I didn't even say a word to him. Oh, man. And then kind of watch them all um, do their thing until we had our scenes to do. But it was just standing behind and just looking at the caliber that was in the room where I just went, this is crazy. Mm. And it was like what you said, one of them moments where it, I wish I could have had something that I could have framed from it, from that moment, if there was just like a picture or, I know in my head, because that picture will always be there in my head because I'll always remember it. But it's again about having that moment of just like gratitude of being like, thank you. Do you know what I mean? And just appreciating these little steps. Because I know there are some actors out there that don't even get a response from their agent. So it's like any thing that I now get, it's about me just being, I'm thankful. Thank you, whoever's above me guiding me, thank you. But yeah, it, it, it was surreal. And when we got on set, it was like Colin Farrell's bursting into the room. And I'm like, yo, what is this? Loveliest individual I've, I've worked with, hands down. He was incredible. And he just made everyone feel so like calm and natural. But he just come in with this energy and it was just like, ah, so this is what, you, this is what it is to be one of the greats. It was just how we came in and approached everyone. It was just, yeah, man, it, it, it was surreal. It was surreal. So I'm like a huge Guy Ritchie fan. Yeah. I, you know, Snatch is like one of my favorites of yes. all time. And then when The Gentleman came out, I think I watched it three times in like the first week, you know, and then I like rewatched it again recently. Um, there's something so like unique and interesting mm. about his style, right? Like it, you know, a Guy Ritchie movie when you see it. And, um, I'm just super curious, like, what are some of the things that kind of stood out during the, um, filming process where. Right. Yeah. So one of the main things that stood out for, well, actually for all of us is ignore the script. The script, mm. don't, the script don't mean nothing. So our first day of filming, we're sat in the back of the truck and it's just the, before we're about to run into the weed farm to like raid it. We're sat in the back of the truck. Um, guy, we're here five minutes before we're filming. So we're like, cool. Getting ready to sell our lines. We just heard the door knock at the back of the van and it was Guy, the first time we've properly seen him. So he's coming and gone, all right, wait, um, forget the scripts. Um, what do you want to call yourself? And I'm like, I'm like, what? He's like, what do you want to call yourself? And I'm like, I don't know, because I'm going off of the character name. I ain't really thought about my own name. He's like, all right, forget this five minutes. You've all got five minutes to think of your own name. I'm coming back. So he's left. <laughs> and all of the cast members just looked, we were all looking at each other like, yo, what are you going to call yourself? And he's like, he's like, I don't know. The other one's like, I don't know. So he's come back in. And I watched the episode of Power the night before for some random reason I was watching Power. And he said, what do you want to call yourself? I just went, Ghost. And he went, ooh, I like that. What do you want to call yourself? So he done all the names and then he turned around and was like, what's your slogan? I was like, oh, he's like, oh, forget this. <laughs> Five more minutes, I'm coming back. So he goes, comes back and then he goes, what's your slogan? So we were all in the back of this truck, just looking at each other, saying these random slogans. I remember I was all laughing at each other. It was, it was beautiful. And then I just turned around to him and went, um, ghost, you'll never see me coming. And then he went, all right, but now I'll say, you'll never see me coming. And that was what then got put in. So I was like, all right, cool. And then next scene, got to it. He's like, okay, forget your lines. No lines. Um, you say this. I'm like, did it, did it. Say this. Did it. Great. You say this. He makes all the lines wow. up on the spot. So when you get the script, you might in the script say you have one line. By the end of the film, you could probably have 50. Like that's how he works. It's like a collaboration on the day. Everything gets made on the day, unless it's one of the big, um, you know, one of the big setups. But all our scenes, we all had to improv on the day, which was intimidating because, you know, us as young actors, we're looking at Guy Ritchie as, yo, this is, this is Guy, do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I watched Snatch, Lockstock, all of these films growing yeah. up and was like, never really had the thought process when I was younger to be like, I would love to be in one of them. But as I got older and into my career, I was like, yo, I'd love to do a Guy Ritchie film. So now I'm here looking at him, I'm like, oh, I need to make sure I do a good job here. So when he's telling you to improv, there was so much pressure but I feel like how he works and how he is with him, him as a person just made you feel a lot more comfortable. Do you know what I mean? He was very welcoming. And um, 
So his process was very, um, everything is made up. Everything is improv, which is interesting. I feel like that's why he gets the best out of people. Yeah. And sometimes, it, and, and it's not everyone. So it's like he has a team that he's worked with for years. They do all his films with him. So I feel like anyone that now, so even me now, I've just done a second film with him. So I feel like what happens is, is that when he works with you, if you can work how he works, then you're good. You're okay. And as long as you're professional and you do your thing, then um, I feel like that's why he always uses a lot of the same people because it's all that process that he needs everyone to be able to do. So he's a very, he's a very funny and special and beautiful man. And it was, it was incredible working with him, but it was very, again, intimidating because it was just, you didn't know what was going to happen on the day. It was just, you turn up and be like, you're doing this. Do you know what I mean? I mean, one quick note before we jump over it. Like, that's incredibly surprising to me just because how detailed and intricate the dialogue is in some scenes, right? So I, I could totally see it for like some stuff, yeah, yeah. but when you're like, he, the dialogue is so incredible and fast paced and engaging and like you have to keep up. That. But I think that's what he did with us. I think because of us as the toddlers, he wanted us to be fresh. So naturally we didn't really get to see a lot of the scenes with the others. So I don't know what the process was like with that, but I would have I would have assumed he kept the lines as the lines because it was a lot more detailed in telling the story. Whereas with us, he could have the freedom with us because we could be the team that came in and just lived in the moment and made it, gave it a bit of something. Do you know I what see. I mean? Whereas I instead of it being, so I know from doing the second film with him that not every scene is written on the day. There are some scenes that he has where it's like, it stays as that. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. it was because we did a scene where Colin Farrell comes into the boxing gym and him, Bugsy, and one of the other guys, Chris, their scene didn't get touched. It was the way it was written in the script was how we did it on the day. But in terms of us first coming in and creating this energy, I feel like he felt when he read it, nah, this could have more energy. And I feel like if I get them to naturally be them, that's going to bring that character out. So I feel like that was the smart thing that he did. He was like, let me trust these lot to bring them to it. So now growing up through, going throughout the film, that energy is naturally going to be there instead of trying to create this fake version of, of this. Do you know what I mean? So Makes he, sense. He's, he's a genius. With how he does it, he's a genius. Even, the, yeah, just his process is, I have to take my heart off to him. I haven't worked with someone like that before. So it was incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I got to go back and watch that film with that, with after hearing that now. Bro, really, yeah. It was, I remember watching it and I put it at the first time at the premiere and I was like, Guy has now gone back to doing Guy Ritchie films. It was like, you know, I've respected what he's done for years, but I feel like The Gentleman was a film where everyone went, yeah, this is, this reminds me like a New Day snatch or lock stock sort of feeling. And I feel 100%. like, I feel like he knew in his head what he was doing when he wrote the, I think he knew, he was like, yep, this is another one. And from the, you know, the reviews and stuff that we had, it definitely was. And um, yeah, it, it was, it was incredible, man. It was incredible. Super jealous. I love hearing about that. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. So you said you do a second film with him, The Covenant? Yes, right? yes, which yeah, yeah. was, again, another surreal moment. Um, I did one audition in my front room with my friend and um, a month later I got the call and was like, they want to offer you the part. I said, all right, cool. We didn't then know, um, well, no, we did. So um, I got a phone call. They said, I want to offer you. And they said, yeah, you'll be starring alongside Jake Gyllenhaal. And I went, oh my Lord. <laughs> I remember being with my ex-girlfriend at the time and I was just like, yo. But she didn't know who he was. So I was like, oh, you're not, you're not, you're not on my vibe right now. <laughs> so I, said, like, I called my mom, I called my brother. I was like, yo, this is going on. They're like, yeah. So we got to set and I'm playing an American soldier in the film. So it's his first ever war film. Um, and oh, wow. yeah, his first ever war film. Um, I, well, I hope, yep. I hope that's right, unless I've got that totally wrong. But no, nah, right. yes, yeah. I definitely think it because I know he's filming another one at the minute, but it's based more on like World War II. But this was his first ever war film and approach to it. So again, got to the um, hotel, reading the lines, reading the lines. And I went, something in me went, don't put too much pressure because I feel like he might change this. So turn up on set, walk there, Jake Gyllenhaal was standing here. I'm just like, yo, this is surreal. I'm like, what is going on here? Guy comes out of his trailer, 
who was proper like lad walk. He's like, right, um, you say this. I'm like, Oh, I knew it. <laughs> but where would the pressure was, it was my first time doing the American accent in for a job. So one, it was that pressure already, it being my first job. Two, I'm now doing it in front of Guy Ritchie. And three, Jake Gyllenhaal standing right here. And I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, you couldn't have put more pressure on me if you wanted. <laughs> so I did it. And I remember just that kind of looking at Jake as if to say he was going to like, oh. Ugh. And I looked, he looked at me and went, I went, oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So then we did the scene and um, it was it was interesting because we played SAS soldiers, so special forces. And I've done an army show before, but we just played normal squaddies. So like your whole training for it was different. So we had a boot camp for two weeks. Um, we had a military advisor and it was incredible, a guy called Kawa. And um, he taught us everything about being a special forces soldier, how you approach, how you gun, how, you, how everything you handle, your mannerisms, everything. And um, so he allowed us to feel a lot more comfortable within the role. And what is crazy, you, you will know this, is like when you play a character, you never really feel like the character until you're in costume. Yeah. As soon as you put a costume on, it changes everything. And then once you're in the space and the scene, you're like, okay, now I feel it. So a lot of us do self tapes and it's just a white backdrop, a camera. You're not in the scene. So you're trying to give the best version of what you would do in the scene. So when you get on set, it was like him training us and then us already practicing with the American and so forth. It was like a lot easier to do it. And there was one scene that we had to shoot in there that was one of the craziest scenes I've ever done. There's this like crazy, um, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say certain things, but there was just a crazy gunfight scene in the film where it was just a lot happening. And I lose my voice quick. So obviously in the scene, it's shouting, shouting, shouting. By the time it got to me being at the last few takes of my scene, I was just like, <laughs> couldn't say nothing. So we had to like do ADR for it. I was just like, <laughs> couldn't get my words. And I was like, no, don't do this now. I was no, like, no. Oh, it, was, it was mental, but it was like doing it, which was what was incredible, was working along so many amazing people. Um, and also I watched Jake uh, perform and... What it showed me is it's okay to mess up. I feel like as a young, new upcoming actor, it's a thing of we put this pressure on ourselves that don't mess up, don't mess up. You can't, everyone's watching you. Everyone, and well, in actual fact, it's okay to mess up. We, as I said earlier, it's like we mess up in life. As long as we can, you know, step away from it, correct ourselves and come back, there's no reason. And I watched him um, do this scene where I could see that he knew where he wanted to go with it, but he couldn't quite get there. And what was happening, he would go for it and then just stop, go back, go again. And then st he did it about four or five times. I remember just watching going, it's okay to mess up. And watching, I think, someone of that caliber and that class do that and just handle it so professionally just made me go, cool. I know how to approach certain situations now on set. Because again, you get on set, there's a lot of pressures, me being young and me just being, well, not just getting into it, but I feel like in terms of the jobs I'm now doing, is now the step up. So it's now me learning and being like, I'm meant to be here. I'm good enough to be here. Hence why I, otherwise I wouldn't be here. And just allowing myself, if I do mess up, to have a breather and just come back at it. But yeah, it was, it was, it was surreal, man. And there was one scene where it's like, I'm kind of carrying it with him. And um, I was reading the lines to the American military advisor just before. And he's like, no, you're like, you sound good, you're good. And I'm like, okay, cool, cool, cool. So then, um, just before I started to do the scene, Jay looked at me and was like, you good with the lines, yeah? And I was like, yeah. He went, okay, we'll see. <laughs> Action. And I was just we'll like, see. oh. And he didn't, because in my head I went, no, show him you got this. And there was just something in me of him saying that, that drove me to just be like, nah, I'm not going to have you do that. And I just went, boom, went in with these lines. And after I finished, he just looked again and just went. So for me, that was just like, yo, I just got the, the head nod from Big Jakey. I was like, yeah. yes, I'm good. And then I feel like often this was the job that I really realized about no notes was good notes. It was a guy didn't come up to me once. He then would allow me to, 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 to play around with my lines. He then would come up to me and be like, yo, what would you say here? And I'm going, oh, you're asking me. And it was the first time he came up to me specifically and was like, what would you want to say? And I'm like, I don't know. And we had like this beautiful moment of like, 
just going back and forth with each other of like what the line should be. He would say what he thought it would be. I was like, no, I think this. And I was just like, yo, I'm fully collaborating now with someone that I've watched your stuff with for years. And on the first yeah. film, The Gentleman, I was so like, nope, I'm, okay, I'll say whatever you want. I feel like on this one, it was like, no, nah, you're approaching me as another creator and you want to create something. So let's create. And we, we managed to come up with this line, which was mental, but it was fun to play it. And then um, I just felt like after when the film was done, I was just like, it's the most I've learned about me as a person. And also me, the most I've learned in terms of my capability of what I can do. And a lot of the things and a lot of the time I always knock myself down where it was the job where I just went, no, nah, I got this and I'm ready for whatever jobs are coming my way, whether it's at this level or whether it's at this level. As long as I know that the piece I'm creating is going to be special, that's all that matters. So I feel like that also helped me going on to the TP set yeah. because it was like, I've done this. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've been around people and I know how to do this. You got it. You know, I'm playing along lines and in, Amer in an American accent next to Jake Gyllenhaal and he's saying, you're good. And I'm like, I've got it. So I think that helped a lot going on to doing an American project. But um, yeah, it was interesting. I feel like Guy was also learning a lot on that job because again, it was his first ever war film. So he was making up the scenes the morning of the shoot day. So we would turn up and all our lines were created in the morning. So we would then get onto set and he's like, you're saying this, you're saying this, you're saying this. That's how it was. So we didn't read no scripts. Halfway through yeah. the boys were like, I'm never reading the script no more. We were just, <laughs> we were just turning up on set and going, okay, yeah. cool, we got to say this. And that's how it worked. But I feel like, again, that's why he gets such raw and unique performances because he allows you to play. And it's, I think that's so crucial in terms of creating something because you allow someone to have that creative freedom of being like, they don't feel caged. Some people might yeah. say the line and it just doesn't, it don't flow properly. So when you allow someone, okay, cool, you've got the line as a guideline. How would you say it? D okay, let's see if it works. And more times it does because it comes out natural. Yeah. So I feel like he's mastered in knowing that letting people play with it will get the best and most natural response. So I feel like that's why a lot of his films and everyone he works with is so good. And they stand out because a lot of directors I've worked with don't allow you to play, and especially writers, they don't really allow you to play with the lines. TP did, which was incredible. Again, gives you a guideline, mm -hmm. have your fun. But a lot of them don't, because it's like it's their baby. Don't change my yeah. baby. This right, is my the baby. writers yeah. especially. Yeah, yeah, it's like, this is my baby. Don't change it. Whereas yeah. the director will be like, cool. If you was the character for you, you'll say this, say it. But you would always then get the writer come and go, um... Could you just keep the lines as yeah. to that? And I'm like, oh, come on. Script yeah. supervisor. Yeah, 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 literally. But working with, yeah, working with him on that was, yeah, it was surreal, man. And I can't wait for it to come out. We've heard some amazing things about it. Um, yeah, some, some, yeah, some amazing stuff. So I'm, I'm just stoked for it to hit the cinemas. Yeah. I saw it. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be nice. yeah it's going to yeah. be crazy. It was just, and just again, I think watching Jake and it was just like, because he, a lot of the scenes, he improved with Guy as well. And it was like, just watching how someone just played something just so, it was just effortless. And I was like, it's to the point where I was watching him going, are you acting? I was just, it was just so surreal because it was just, but then when you saw it on camera, it was just like, yo, this, oh, so this, it was just, it was incredible. It was yeah. incredible. Yeah. It was nuts. It was nuts. Yeah, that's amazing. So man. I'm looking forward to, I'm definitely going to hold a little screening when it comes out here. Yeah, man. I said to Nick, we should all just go hit up the cinema and just watch it all together just to see that'd, the vibe. Hopefully great, if we're man. all in town together and we're not, do you know what I mean? We're not all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Well, if we're, dude, if we're there, we'll be there, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah if we're here, I mean. Can I invite myself to that one? Oh, of course. Cool. That's <laughs> no, what I was saying. I, I, was just, I was just saying, no, we're just all did. there. No, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. I want, I want, I want yeah, to experience man. that with good people, man. Dude, so, um, yeah. but yeah, I'm looking forward to when it drops. Yeah, I think it's dude i'm so stoked for you man i'm so proud of you dude no, no, uh, thank you my bro. you're you're absolutely crushing it dude you and nick are two of my favorite people man uh, we, uh we've had some beautiful conversations and i mean just in terms of you know being around people that push you to do better you've always done that from when i first spoke to you and first met you and um i just feel like conversations me and you have had about growth mm -hmm. and where we were years ago to, yeah. to who we are now and also understanding that this ain't the finish line for us now. This is just the beginning. Yeah. And it's that beautiful thing of looking at each other. Whenever I see you post on set, I'm like, yo, yes. Do you know what I mean? And it's, it's rare that you have that with, yeah. especially in this industry where everyone's so, you know, fixated on themselves and wants themselves to blow. And everyone's so self 
absorbed that they forget to show love to the people that are also trying to do it. And I feel yeah. like that's the thing about our team is that we all push each other. We, we don't have to speak to each other every day, but whenever I see you doing something, just know I'm behind that picture or behind that quote gang. You got this. Do you that's know what just, I mean? Yeah. And it's like, that's the beautiful thing with us is that it's a team of, of, of creators, but a team of friends, but also a team of people that want each other to do well. Yeah. And that's rare in this day, especially out in yeah. Hollywood. It's like everyone, do you know what I mean? It can be a bit, oh, you're not on this level or you're yeah. not here. Do you know what I mean? Whereas I feel like that's kind of just knocked to the side of us and it's like a family. Absolutely, man. And I think it takes time to find not only those people, but there's a patience there too. There's a learning yeah. curve yeah. where my friends and my, my everyday life mm. were the polar opposite of that. It's like, it's all about me and what I can do and how I can mm. use you and take the advantage of this situation to whatever to get to where I need to go. Mm. And I've always been, well, it's, what do you mean? Like there's plenty for everybody. There's yeah. enough abundance of, of work and money and time. Like, yeah. well, time's maybe not as much, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but there's enough to go around for everyone. Mm. And, and it genuinely makes me happy to see you do well. You know, and I want to root for you. Dude, I want you to be, as high up as you yeah. can possibly go. And if, and if that's where your past taking you, which yeah. I believe it is, you know, that's what I want to see. Yeah. And regardless if I'm there or not, yeah. you know, and my, my intention is always going to be, you know, I'm going to work as hard as I possibly can. Mm. I'm never going to quit. Mm. I'm never going to mm. stop one way or another. I'm going to get there because of my own belief in myself. But mm. when I do get there, the people like you, mm. they, you know, uh, all my friends will mm. everyone as much as I can go. I want to give back to all of them. 1000. And yeah. then the other people 1, that were like me, like yeah. you, when we first started, give yeah. them an opportunity, them opportunity, you know? And I feel like that's what a lot of people now, which I've seen happen in this game, a lot of people, you know, come from nothing or come from a position where they weren't now. And as soon as they get there, they forget what it was like to have been there. And it's like, I will never forget that because I, was, I wasn't, I was um, you know, born and raised in a rich area. I wasn't born and raised around money. I was I was born and raised around a good family and a good bunch of people that wanted to see each other do well from when we were young. And obviously you find out from being young about who's not right for you, who is. And I feel like that allowed you to come into life and go, cool, this is a good person. And these are the sort of people I want around me. And I feel like that's what we've been blessed with is having that eye to be like, ma, I can see you want the best for me. I can see you're not here because you want what I might be able to get you or, yeah. and even if I can, as my brother, as my friend, if I can help you, I'm going to help you. But if I feel like it's just, that's all this is, then I'm like, something's going on here. But I feel like where everyone's going now was, it was written. It was meant to happen. And I look at, you know, the, the negative situations that have happened in my life that nearly stopped me from acting um, recently. Um, where I was like, nah, I don't want to do this no more. Nearly gave up. And then my visa came through and I was like, whoa. And then four days later, I was in Atlanta filming. But no one knew this. This was more in my own head, just through personal things that happened. But it just showed me that this journey is written. And what helps it is if we have the belief to keep that motor rolling. And the only time we fall off is when we stop believing. And that's when it's like, do you know what I mean? I feel like oh, yeah. our, our, our stories are already in motion. It's just about us now just to continue writing it. And that's the thing with all these things that happen in life that go, could either make you stop, could either set you back, or it's a bit about you going, no, nah, this is this is a barrier. I'm cool with getting over this. It might take me two weeks, it might take me a year, but I'll get over it. And once you do, you feel so much better because you're like, oh, this is what's on the other side. I saw this, do you know what I mean? So it's just yeah. about having those individuals around you that that believe in you, that love you, that want you to do well. And also just reciprocating that within yourself and just having that same energy with everything you do. I yeah. just want to enjoy every moment. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know what's around the corner. I don't think any of us did. So I feel like now even us being able to be here now and have this conversation where we ain't got to wear masks and yeah. we ain't got to stand 15,000 meters away from each other. It's like, it's beautiful. So I feel like just embracing it and just seeing where the world takes you. That's, that's, that's my thing. Amen, man. Well said. Yeah, I've, I've always... Like you're, you said, you know, this whole year and everything moving forward really is going to be about being thankful and everything. Mm -hmm. I say it all the time to my friends and family and people I care about, people I meet on the street, whatever it is, is I like to move forward with gratitude and everything that mm -hmm. happens, the good and the bad. There's lessons in everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm always saying, you know, Will's, I sound like a broken record now, but I always say I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be when I'm supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. So regardless of what's happened in my life, regardless if I got that role or not, you mm -hmm. know, whatever it may be. I'm right where I'm supposed to be and whatever I'm supposed to learn now and however I'm supposed to show up, whoever I'm supposed to help in this moment, whatever yeah. you're supposed to help me. Uh, I'm just going to, doesn't mean I'm not going to put my left foot in front of my right mm, and keep mm, going forward and pressing mm, forward and giving everything mm. I have. 
but to have that you know ability to just be present and whatever, yeah. wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, yeah. so that I don't have the pressure of, oh, I'm not you know a Brad Pitt or mm, a Matthew McConaughey mm, or mm, whoever mm. it may be right now, or if I even ever yeah. get there. But you're you though, and that, well, that, that, me, that exactly. you will, you will be you, and like this yeah. is the beautiful thing is that we've 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 had those as the lookups, but it's like I'm gonna be me and. Yeah. If me ever gets put in with those, then cool. And it's yep. like they're, they're people I've looked at as being inspired by and, and you know, making me push to do even better. But when I get to that level, I'm going to be known as me. I'm exactly. going to be known as the guy that's not trying to be like Denzel or this. I'm going to be the guy that's not, oh, that's Sean. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's about having that belief. And it's also what you said is interesting about taking each step. Is like the beautiful thing with us now when I feel we're on the same journey is that we can see the light. All we have to do now is concentrate on each step that's in front of us to get us there. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I can see the bigger picture, but do you know yeah. what? Let me just focus on these steps here. Yep. And I'll be like, oh my God, it's there. Do you know what I mean? That's that's what I feel like is now. A lot of people get clouded with that and forget to look where they're walking. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's- It's, it's the mentality of uh, being, which most people are the opposite of this, you know, and, and it's natural for us to be that way, but being patient with your long-term goals mm. and impatient with your day-to-day. Most yeah. people are patient with their day to day and impatient with their long term goals. Yeah, yeah. So it's about that mentality of being like, what can I do today? What is everything I can give? Leave it yeah. all on the table to get me closer to that. Yeah. And you do that, you know, that 10 year goal turns into a five year goal or three year goal, whatever it may be, versus the opposite where that goal may never come because yeah. you're just waiting around for that yeah, opportunity yeah, yeah. or that call that. That's never. That, yeah. Yeah, and sometimes it's, it's not needed. It yeah, it's not. Yeah. And I, I always look at life now as two things is my analogy of it. One is a marathon, not a sprint. Mm. I need to take my time to get to where I need to get to. I might sprint, but I'm going to burn out. And then I'm going to be like, oh, forget that. I can't be, but I'm going home. And I also look at life as a book. You know, some books have chapters that last longer than others. Some chapters you learn more from than you do with others. But the beautiful thing with our book is that we have some say in the way it finishes. We can write it to get to a certain level of how our book finishes. I like that. It then gets to the end where it's like, we don't know what's in Liverpool in terms of the way we go and with the way we leave this earth, but... I can write as much as I can to get me to that moment. So you might have a past relationship. Okay, cool. That was one chapter. What's next? You might have learned more from that than this next one, but that's cool. What's next? And it's about making your book as interesting and as fun as possible. So it's like when I go, that book is what's left. And that, that, that yeah. struggle, that journey, that, that, that heart and, and that, um, that belief is what people will remember. And I feel like as long as we stay true to that, then... Everything's going to come, man. And it will just take its time. We'll have our setbacks, but setbacks are cool. It's like you yeah. have to fail to succeed. And it's like people are scared. It's not people that are scared of the light. People are scared of the darkness because people yeah. don't want to succeed because you have to fail. And that feeling of failure is what makes someone go, oh, it's not the feeling of success because yeah. whenever we do something bad, we're like, oh, but when we do something good, we're like, yeah. So it's yeah. that. Some of the most successful or am and ambitious people I've ever met have been through some of the biggest hardships, yeah. you know? And yeah. I think, you know, it's that fire that can yeah. forge the the toughest metals and the toughest people, yeah. for sure. It's that hitting rock bottom and going, I either stay here or I fight to get up. And it's that fight that I feel if we can, you know, with whatever situations we go through personally, if we can allow us to continue to have that fight despite whatever it is, then, then it'll happen. And I feel yeah. like, yeah, that's the way I'm trying to, I'm not saying I'm doing it, but I mean, it's like, it's no harm. I'm trying to, trying to become that person. And I feel like it's, it's, it's important, especially with Dennis and especially being creators, because with creators, we have control to a certain extent. And after that, we have to let go. And I think too, it's like, it's super important not to, like everything's relative, right? You know, we all kind of have our own forms of trauma and it's not about comparing it to other people. It's about how we handle our own individual mm, stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it's a small obstacle or a big one, it's, it's just like you guys said, you know, learning from it and, and being the best you. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. That's a, a mentality that I've always adopted and been a fan of mm. before I even went down this mm. journey was to bring your own uniqueness to the world. Be mm. you. Mm. I, I never wanted to be anybody else, man. Mm. I want to be me and wherever that takes me and wherever I land, mm. that's, I'm okay mm. with that. Mm. And I'm mm. happy with that. Mm. But to be the best version of myself, you know, cause there's different versions along the way, like you said, different chapters. Yeah. And I believe, you know, life is, it's not what happens to us. And a lot of stuff happens, you know, yeah. COVID happened, uh, life stuff happens. We yeah. lose people, you know, we gain people, a lot of different things happen, but it's how we react to those things yeah. that dictates mm. our lives. It's our habits every day mm. is mm. what determines where we are and how we show up mm. in the world. So 
It's about refining those, learning mm-hmm. how you react to it. Like Will was saying, we all have different traumas, different things have happened to us, how we, how, you know, and how we operate. Yeah. But it's how we react to those things and, and realizing that, you know, I don't want to be this person anymore, yeah. this version of myself. Yeah. And I know I have the power to become better or different yeah. or whatever it may be on my path, but be, be, you know, bring your own uniqueness to the world and, and be true to yourself. You know, mm-hmm. bring, I, I'm a huge fan of living in your truth, man. Mm-hmm. And, and I think with all of those aspects, it really starts to open up more doors. Like you're saying, putting negativity out yeah. in the world, you're going to get more negativity yep. coming, coming so in. So it's going to come back. Yeah. It's the same thing with the opposite, yeah. you know? And, and it's also the truth. I think we are saying about living in the truth. If you know that you're living in the truth, when you then wake up, every moment you wake up, you're not, you feel good. Yeah. It's like I've been as honest with myself yeah. as I can be. What have I then got to hold me back right now? I yeah. now know that what I've done in this moment, I've been truthful. Yeah. So go. Cool. Whereas if you've lied and you're not happy with yourself, but you're giving this fake version to everyone else, you're always going to go bed, gun. The nice, nicest thing about not being a liar is you don't have to remember the lies. It there takes so much energy. It's, it's a lot of energy. Exactly. It takes so yeah. much Being, energy. Listen, when I was yeah. yeah, when I was a kid, I used to lie like no <laughs> one's business. And there would be times I'll get caught out of my own lie because I couldn't remember it. And I was yeah. like, yeah. I was like, yeah, this isn't good. Maybe I need yeah, to yeah. stop lying. I feel like I just need to tell the truth from now. It's yeah. easier. That's but it's true. It is yeah, true. Yeah. It's, it's draining. But I feel like I feel like everything's looking good now, man. I feel like the the, the steps for 2023 for everyone. I feel yeah. like the majority of people I'm speaking to, there's a real positive feeling about what's happening in the world right now. And I feel like that's a lot more people becoming more in touch with who they are and what is right and what what they should be doing. And I feel like for us as creators, I feel like now, finally after COVID, everything's kind of opening back up now where it's like, okay, yeah. the world's more oyster now. So yeah, let's yeah. have fun. Let's go at it. Yeah, Hell it, yeah. yeah. As you should. As yeah. you should. It's, I, I have that feeling too, you know? And like, I feel like COVID did kind of force everyone to deal with some stuff and grow from it and, mm. and move on. And like, I, I have a really good feeling about this year. Yeah. I really do. That's what's beautiful. It's like everyone I'm speaking to has that same energy. And it's like, you know, when you speak to some people, it's like, no, I have a good, you, I can really feel yeah. when people are saying it yeah. this year of like, no, I, I feel good. And so we should, I feel like we should feel good every day. Do you know what I mean? And just yeah. like, like, but I feel like now it's the, it's the steps into the new. And yeah. that's, that's what's exciting. Stedman Graham always says, yeah. have more positive things than negative things in your day. If you can control it. Right. And a lot of it's mindset and perspective, but like mm. if you can just try every day to just have a few more positive things than negative things, then, you know, that's a net positive overall for, yeah. for the rest of time. Yeah. So yeah. Try yeah. to keep that in mind. I was, that's actually, yeah, that's actually quite cool. Yeah, on, the, on that note, man, I always find it interesting that, you know, uh, I heard this a while ago and I've always loved it, is, is regardless of how your day is going, you know, whether mm. you feel like a 10% or 100% of yourself, give everything you have on that day. Because the difference is, you know, if you only have a 10% day and you're just exhausted, you're tired, you can't focus, whatever the things, you have a lot of stuff going on in your life, if you still give 100% of that 10%, you're 10% more ahead than you would be if you didn't. And then you're negative 10 or you're negative 20, negative 50, you know, whatever it may be. So each day, whatever you have to give, just give it. Yeah. And, and what I found in this last year specifically is um, I've been giving as much as I can, working as hard as I possibly can. Mm-hmm. And the result has been more opportunity, mm-hmm. uh, more understanding of what I'm able to mm-hmm. go through and how I'm able to show up in the world and, and more things are coming my way where it's like, mm-hmm. yeah. look, I'm... Tr- I feel like crap today, but I'm gonna go train, you know, because yeah. I got that role coming. Yeah. Or, yeah. or even if it's not there, I'm, I'm, I'm envisioning it coming. You yeah. know, I've, I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna finish all these emails. Yeah. I'm gonna do all the stuff yeah. I need to do. All the things that I, you know, sometimes you don't want to do, but yeah. you someone, just do it. Someone said to me, um, someone that I really respect, a friend back home, was like, I was going for a real time. I couldn't bother to go gym and stuff. And he turned around to me and was like, make everything in your life a necessity. Everything you do. So you know how you wake up and you have to brush your teeth have that same thing with having to go to the gym. You know how you have that same thing with brushing your teeth? Make sure you have that same thing with reading a script. Make everything where it has to be done. So there's no, you don't wake up and think, oh, should I brush my teeth today? No, you don't do that. You instantly wake up and you're straight in the bathroom. And it's like, have that mindset with everything else. And before you know it, you mentally train yourself where you're you're just unstoppable. And I watched him with how he carried out his day. And I was like, whoa you're getting stuff done. And yeah. I'm like, and he just said, because to me, it's a necessity. I'm not thinking, I just have to do it. And that, on the time I rest is when I'll get in from whatever I'm doing and I lay on my sofa on my bed and that's when I go sleep. Yeah. And I'm like, I was, oh. 
I always tell people this is, you know, um, whether it's in the gym, whether it's, you know, reading those scripts, whether it's, you know, writing, you know, comics, whatever it may be, you keep doing it, but then life is going to give you days off. Mm. We have sick days, you know, mm. we've, we've got days where, you know, we're traveling. We mm. got days where, you know, something is happening in the family, whatever it may be. There's a million different things, different variations of this, mm. but, but I found that life gives you days off. And regardless, it might even be that there's a vacation coming mm. your way, you know, and that's mm. your time and that you earn that. And that is what it is. But if I give everything I have in the time frame that I do have, well, I'm going to end up farther than I did if I tried to get those little vacations or time yeah. off in my day to day. Imagine you took six hours out of your day just yeah. to do nothing, you know? Yeah, it's, it's wasted. I'm not saying that that's a yeah. wrong or anything, but yeah. but if you can use it and implement it to what you want to go, yeah. you'll be that much farther ahead. And it's also, it's like, it's, it's about having, and I spoke to an actress out here who was like, I approach everything like a, an athlete. Mm. She's like an athlete, um, an athlete who's competing. I was like, what do you mean? She's like, well, if I've got a script, I have to do that script. I have to learn the lines and yeah. I have to perform that self tape. She's like, as an athlete, if you want to be successful, you got to train. You got to turn up to training however many days a week. You've got to make sure your 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 mentality is is disciplined and the way they handle things and go about things is such a disciplined mentality to have that if you can adapt that with other parts of your life, you'll be surprised in the results that you see. Yeah. And it's like it is true. It's like if you have that 6 hours in a day where you do nothing, you could have spent three hours learning a new language yeah. of that six. Exactly. It's a, there's no excuse there's nowadays, no, dude, with the none. internet and everything yeah, available, man. There's none. Like, you're there's totally none. right. Like I do the other Saturday, I taught myself Unreal Engine, like the software thing, you know, and I watched a tutorial and practiced it and I'm not that great at it, but I can use it. But and you're, I'm you're not that it. great, but you're a lot better than what you was before you before exactly. you looked into it. And, and that's, that's all that matters. And that's our thing is like, we go, oh no, there's too much effort, but it's not really. Cause once you start doing it, it's like anything, once you start doing it, it's either you enjoy it or you don't. And I feel like yeah, right. it's about finding out. So I could try this. If I don't enjoy it, then that's not for me. Yeah. I don't need to do it. Do you know what I mean? Strengths and weaknesses, man. Some, yeah. some of the best leaders and best uh, CEOs or owners of companies too mm. are, you know, they know their strengths and they know their mm. weaknesses. And mm. well, here it is like, okay, I might not be the best copywriter or the best, you know, uh, filing this thing or doing whatever the, all the tasks mm. it takes to run a company. Mm. Right. But I am good at finding those people mm. that can do that. And you yeah. mitigate the work to them. And then it's like, okay, well, I find that the best adapters, the highest adapter, like the best people for those roles. Well, now you have across the board, the best company. Yeah. You know? And then you yeah. go from there and it doesn't mean you're doing all the work. <clears throat> well, you're it's doing like, things like Elon Musk. He's yeah. not out there building the rockets with his hands, but yeah. he's putting the teams together. But he's got, right? It's the Hell same yeah. thing I said about Guy Ritchie. Is like he put in the groundwork. He then now created a team where he can chill in his trailer and the whole production will carry on running yeah, man. just as smoothly because he's done the hard work but built this amazing team around yeah. him where he ain't got stress as much now. Yeah. And it is also different. I feel like, you know, a day and age we live with, there is a lot of mental health issues that stop people from doing what they're doing. And us as being young men, it is a lot of that is within young men that doesn't get spoken about enough. So again, if people are going through that, it is okay to have your down days. It's not, we don't have to constantly feel like I have to do something. I have to, because sometimes you're just burning the candle at both ends and maybe you need to have a bit of time to self-reflect and, and understand who you are, what you are, yeah. where you want to go. And um, yeah, man, just understanding that it's okay to, to have your down days and have those moments where, like what you said, when yeah. life gives you your days off, it's okay. Do you know what I mean? I feel like a lot of people are now wanting to be something that they're not or wanting something that they can't get because they're seeing so much and it's putting so much pressure on people's yeah. lives to, to be better, to do better, that they're not happy within themselves. And that's where that pressure comes in. And I feel like just do things at your pace. Another thing I always say is that if I'm driving a car and my dream car is to the right of me with everything I want in it, all my dreams, this, this, the, the perfect woman and da, da, da. If I carry on focusing on that for too long, I'm going to crash. Yeah. I'm going to write off. So I can give it a glimpse and appreciate it and be like, oh, that looks nice. But let me focus on here because we're both going to the same place anyway. It might take me longer, but I will get there. And I feel like a lot of people now put so much focus on other people's lives and forget about their own. And through yeah. social media and so forth, is that everyone portrays them to be living the greatest life. We all can do it if we want, make our life yeah, look like yeah. the best thing. But again, being truthful to yourself. Yeah. And that's the main thing. I feel like if people are truthful to themselves, you're nothing to worry about. Do you know what I mean? I feel like all those dreams and aspirations you have will come true if you just stay true to yourself and do your day by day bits to get there. And to use the athlete analogy, right? Like 
rest and recovery is mm-hmm. just as important as the actual workout. Like you, True. you guys yeah. both know from working yeah. out or sports, you know, mm. that's why they don't play NFL games seven days a week. Right. Yeah. Like, and sometimes it's, yeah. it, it is more important than the rest, the rest and recovery. It's like, yeah. it's about, you know, recharging that battery. I feel like Hell some yeah. people forget to recharge it and you know, you might, you can say you're productive seven days a week, but if your battery is not charged, are you really giving the best what you can? I feel like it's yeah. as long as you are doing the basics and charging and then you're ready to go again, then who can stop you? Yeah, and understand Nobody. that. Exactly. And it's understanding that for you just because, you know, uh, uh, you know, David Goggins or, uh, you know, Mark Wahlberg, mm. whoever's getting up at 3.30 in the yeah. morning and, and running 20 miles or 200 miles, whatever the heck their <laughs> thing is. Miles. David Goggins, yeah. 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 250. In space. In, <laughs> what, <dude. laughs> doing all kinds of crazy stuff, right? <laughs> But as long as all that stuff's going on, um, it's not comparing you to them. Mm. You know, I'm like, I don't need to be up getting up at 3.30 in the morning because I'm more creative at night. Yeah. So once 11 o'clock hits, it doesn't matter how tired I am, I wake my ass up and I'm all of a sudden I'm, I'm writing, I'm reading, That's I'm learning. Me. Yeah, you yeah. know, until the, until, and so it affects my yeah. sleep a little bit. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's like, I know that I operate best mm. on, mm. you know, seven and a half hours of sleep or whatever it may be. Mm. And understanding that within myself, because then if I'm only trying to sleep four hours a day and I yeah. have a crappy, you know, 20 hours, it's not the same as getting those eight hours yeah. and having a good 16, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that's why I asked that. Cause I was always like, I was in the same when I was watching the Mark Wahlbergs and Dwayne Rock Johnson getting up at three in the morning and da, 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 I was like, oh, am I, am I not doing things right? And then I thought, wait, hold on. That's them. That's yeah. not me. That's yeah. them. So yeah. that's their life. But I'm the same as you. I come alive at night. So then what I started to establish was is that as long as I can get what I need to get done basically through the day, there ain't got to be a time I need to be up at eight in the morning and this. I don't have a time. So I can make my 24 hours fit yeah. for me. And I feel like people just need to fit their schedule for them and stop looking at how everyone else is doing it and going, oh, I need to do that. But no, that's not for you. That's for them. It might help you. Maybe try it. But you need to understand what's good for you in your day, in whatever you do, whatever job you want to do, whatever training you want to do, whatever you want to do, yeah. do what's good for you. Don't do what's good for the other person that you see and think, oh, let me try it again. It might help, but don't necessarily mean it will fit with you. Um, 100%. That's what I was saying. It's like, yeah. it's weird because I come like, so I was like, how can I now make my 24 hours as productive as possible with these hours of how I work? And it's been okay so far. And that's because yeah. I learned to adapt my life to how... I work instead of watching someone else. And, oh, it's, yeah. and it's within those those chapters of your life too. Yeah. Like, you know, it might be this time frame for an hour because I've had, you know, a year at a time, six months at a time where I'm like, oh, I'm getting up at 5 a.m. going to the gym. That's what I'm doing. And I'm moving on from there. And I'll, and I'll get in that groove. And then I'll have one night where it's like, oh, I'm up till 4 a.m. because we have a night shoot or something yeah, like that. And it yeah. throws my whole schedule off. And I'm like, oh, now I'm getting up at 10 a.m. from yeah. now on, you know? Yeah. Just, yeah. And it just throws the groove off. But I used to think I, you know, same thing. I'd compare myself to these other people and I'm thinking I got to get up at five, got to get up at six, got to get up whatever mm. time. And I heard this uh, interview with Brad Pitt one time and mm. he's like, and someone's like, what time do you get up? Are you like a morning person? Mm. And he's like, I don't know. You know, sometimes I, uh, I get up early and I go, I go through that groove, you know, I go through that wave of it. And sometimes I go to bed really late, you know? And I was like, I need to stop judging myself on that, yeah. you know, especially as a creator. It's yeah. just don't limit my creativity yeah. and don't put myself in a box. That's two of my... That's one thing I learned early on that I really loved is the difference between competitiveness and creativeness. You yeah. know, competitive, you can only be as good or better or just, you know, a little bit better than the best, right? Yeah. If, if that's yeah. your goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's com- competitive. Creative, you're in your own world, your own yeah. space. You're making a new space, you yeah. know, and whatever it may be. And then eventually there'll be people that are competitive within mm. that space too. Mm. But if you're in that creative space, it gives you a different flow state. Mm. It gives you a different mentality, a different, I'm not comparing to anything mm. else. I'm mm. doing me now. My and, the, turn. and the beautiful thing is, is that being self-employed, you ain't waking up unless you have to. So it's like, if I now get a cool time of six in the morning, I'll know, I now know the night before how I'm planning my sleep on my day to fit that schedule. If I've not got that cool time, I don't need to sit there and be like, oh God, I need to wake up at nine and For what? No, I don't need to. I'm not waking up to take phone calls for anyone else. If I need to wake up to send emails or self-tapes, then I will fit that in again in my day. So it's like... Being a creator, we get to create our own space, which means we get to create how our hours are used and how we use them yeah. with what we want to do with them. So I feel like the, the the lost piece that gets happened is that so many people are trying to live it because they're thinking this is how it's meant to be instead of just living it for, again, the truth. And it is so truthful, just live it for what's true to you. 
And that's the important thing for me, for people that then, you know, can make those those steps that become closer to their goals or the success that they want because they've used their time, how they know to use it in what's important for them. Which makes it more efficient and more productive. Hell yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like I already know tomorrow I'm flying out and then I get in to Memphis around one in the morning I land and then I probably won't get to the hotel checked in until yeah. 2, 2.30 two, yeah. maybe. Probably won't um, go sleep till like three, three thirty, if that. If that yep. Yeah, and then I got to be up around six to yep. do hair and makeup yep. all day, you yep. know, and, and get get back into the, yeah. the whole. And I'm like, oh, yeah. and the next day, set five a.m. Probably, yeah. You know? yeah. It's just the way it is. But the beauty is, is that you know it's that. So now yeah. you're ready for it. So now oh, you're, yeah. you're already preparing yourself for that. So come these trips and these days on set, you'll be able to get through it because that's how you know to do it. Yeah, yeah. Where instead of if you've never known and you just come into these things, like you're going to be like, whoa, what is going on here? But because now you've been in it and you know how to do it, yeah. it's going to be a lot easier to survive and get through your day. You might be tired yeah. at the end, but you did it. Yeah, man. Do you know you, what I mean? And you can be tired at the end of a normal yeah. day too, you know, yeah. so. You can be tired after a day of doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I've had that more. before. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, why am I it's so like, tired? Yeah. I've done nothing. I've yeah. just been sitting on the couch the whole day. I'm like, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's just yeah, it's just about I feel like now just doing what's right for you. Yeah. Um, also having fun in life. Don't take things too serious, and you know, see what the world see what the world brings for you. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Yeah. You got any uh, dream roles or anything that you want to create one day? You think you ever step behind the camera? Well, I've written a film. Um, well, my friend helped me write it, and um, it's I would love to get it up in motion one day. Um, it's based on two brothers. So it's based on me and my brother. And it's about, um, it's about their struggles through one that has everything and one that doesn't. And it's also, you know, the, uh, the, the backgrounds behind them that allow them to make these decisions in terms of, you know, you always have that one friend that has the family that has all the money and they can do whatever they want and they don't. And you always have the one friend that has the parents with nothing, but that's the one that always wants to do something and better themselves. And it's just about watching the triggers and, the choices that they make on the journeys that they're on. So I would love to bring that to life one day, which I know I will. But in terms of a dream role, um, I would love to play, I would love to do a thriller <clears throat> of being yeah. like an evil cop um, who everyone loves at first, but just has this real dark twist in him. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just want to, yeah, that. I just want to have, I want to play, I want to play characters where there's not a specific, I just want to play characters where people look and go, whoa, that was dope. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's more just creating fun pieces of art and but also stuff that's gonna take me out of my comfort zone. I feel like that's what's next yeah. now. I need to I need to jump on a job where I have to fully strip away Sean to become someone. Yeah. And I know it's gonna, yeah, it's it's yeah, gonna yeah, come. Yeah. There, there's something in the pipeline that's that's similar. And we'll take it, it will take a it's gonna take a bit of work for me to work on when when it does come. But um again, I'm excited. It's it's a new journey and it's Good, man. yeah, doing a job that takes me out of my comfort zone, I think is what's next. That's great. Yeah. yeah. I've I've always found the more uncomfortable you get and then you get used to that, now you're ready for next something, yeah. next thing, next yeah. height, you know, whatever yeah. it may be. And and it's man, the That's first what time I feel I... like it was. I feel like it was in London I got comfortable. Yeah. And I kind of did everything in London, the jobs in terms of the jobs. And then for me now, the next step was America. And it's now playing American productions, meaning I would have to become or play an American citizen. So for me, that's out of my comfort zone because yeah. I'm not American. So being on set around, you know, all of this is, is nerve wracking because I'm like, oh shit, is anyone <laughs> hearing my accent? I'm like, oh damn, 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 damn. <laughs> And I like try and trick people. So even when I did the TP film, I turn up on set every day in American. I didn't speak in English once. I'm like really curious to hear Yeah, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Now. Everyone puts that pressure on me. Yeah. I'm like, oh, do you know what it is? It's like, yeah. I have to do like this old little thing in my head for me to like yeah. get into yeah. it. But it was interesting because sorry, I did it. Sorry. No, no, it's all good. I'm sorry. sorry, it's all good. It was like, and I did it. And um, I remember when I started speaking in English the first time, people looked at me and were like, yo, what? And I was like, it worked. I was like, yes, okay, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was. And so I feel like that because Nick, my brother, he was like, yeah, just go in American. Go in on the first day and just be American. It's yeah. going to feel awkward. It's going to feel uncomfortable. You're going to feel like everyone's listening to you. But the more you do it, the more it's just going to feel natural. And I was like, all right, cool. So then, yeah, went in the first day and like I every any time I went to say a word, I was like overthinking, wait, how do you, like, do you say it? Like here and there and, blah, 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 blah. and I was like oh <laughs> shit and then after a while after the first day it was just it just came out and That's I was him. just like yo so well we'll see when the show comes out how, <laughs> how true it is to an American accent we'll see if uh, the, if the fans don't like it but yeah now nah, I'm looking yeah it was just more about 
me now taking a step to being as far away from Sean as possible, but with still an element of me in it. That's, I think, what the next step for me is in my career with another role. Dude, that, that takes courage, man. Mm. Going in somewhere, just like completely being someone else, you know? Yeah, yeah. Man. I feel like it's, it's <laughs> like also, not in front of the camera. Like, yeah, it normal, was. Like. It was. It was nerve. It was nerve wracking. I remember sitting in the makeup trailer, and I was just like, and it was until no everyone was just talking to me normally. I was yeah. like, oh okay, no one's <laughs> noticing yet. And yeah. then I remember when I first started speaking in English on set, everyone was like, yo, what? the And I was like, yeah, I'm from London. And everyone was like, what? So yeah, it, it was yeah. fun, but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. That's awesome. But yeah, no, that would that would be the next step. Yeah, yeah. What about you? Man, I, I've always wanted to play. Um, there's this character, and I don't know what it would be yet. Yeah, it's probably something I'm going to write, but yeah. uh, a really fucking dope father daughter combo. Oh, that would be dope. Yeah. yeah. Where, where something happens. I have a couple things in mind, but uh, he basically goes to the ends of the earth to save this girl, man. Like, like, kind of like, or a, protect her. Like a take him vibe. Di yeah, different, but like, yeah. With that love. Yeah, With yeah, That love yeah. of like More the extent of, the, of what you would, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they kind of were like a little separate in, yeah. the, in their relationship, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah, this yeah. would be a super tight knit, almost like she's with them half the time. Yeah, okay. But. Yeah, that would be, that would be, that would be dope. Yeah. That would be dope. I got some personal ties as to why. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, but, yeah. It would, uh, Nah, man, yeah, something like that, I think it'd be great. And it's also like, uh, I, I love drama too, so something very yeah. very grounded, very real. And mm -hmm. and I think, you know, you see a lot of big guys that don't really, a lot of times, I, I also lose my voice a lot because I'm yeah. always playing some dude yeah. screaming, yeah, screaming something. Dude. Being the macho, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think, that, I think that'll be interesting is to see, you know, someone of that of that stature where you look and with, would feel like that's the presence they would have. But then to see yeah. the other side, which yeah. is, you know, which every human has, well, the majority of us have, you know, that, that soft centered side. And it's just about, and again, the beauty with what we get to do is we get to put that and bring yeah. that to life. Yeah. So I know, I know, I, well, I already know with, with yeah, you that yeah, that yeah. will happen. I already know. Yeah, man. I already well, the, know. And that was the thing too, you know, it's, it's, I love Hollywood, man. I love all the opportunities and the, the, the opportunities to work with some of these high level, mm. incredible talent, uh, creative geniuses. There's so many of these people, man. And, I love that, but I also have this urge, this need to create film, whether I'm producing, directing, writing, whatever it is. Like I just, I have it in me, and I know yeah. it was. It's also the mentality of me moving here. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. I got every day. Someone was saying, "You need a model. You need to act. You need this." And yeah. I'm like, when I'm a young kid, yeah. you know, when I'm younger, yeah. and no one ever came to the door and gave me the golden mm, ticket. You know, mm. and so I, I looked at how much money I didn't make that year, <laughs> and then uh, I was like, I can either wait for someone to do this, and it yeah. probably is never going to come, yeah. or I can go. Go, make it happen and go yeah. work for it and I know it'll happen yeah. and so I still have that mentality to this day of like I want to create all this stuff just like some of my favorite people you know yeah. you look at Sylvester yeah. Sloan you look at Tyler Perry you look at like some of these people that are they put themselves on the map the Arnold Schwarzenegger you know, they they built their way into it and literally you know? from nothing from, nothing, that, man, from yeah. that same hunger place is that again there are the rare few people in this game that get the lucky ticket the rare yeah. few that get that golden ticket where they come in and boom overnight they're just yeah. huge success but the majority don't get that and the majority yeah. have that struggle and have had that struggle prior to coming into this and i feel like it's also something that i feel drives a lot of creators is having a struggle i feel like a lot of creators become more creative because they've experienced a lot more than the individual yeah. that hasn't do you know well, what i mean it's also the being told no 24 7 yeah. you know it's, yeah. it's you for every 99 no's you get one yes yeah. if you're lucky you yeah know? yeah so that strengthens you in a way that yeah. I think a lot of people, you get comfortable with re rejection, get comfortable with failure yeah. and with yeah, the no's yeah. that you get told all the time. And, and then it changes the way, well, I'm still here. Yeah, right? I'm still here. So and some of the strongest people. Yeah. And also it just makes that one yes feel so much better. Yeah. For all those yeah, hundred yeah. no's that every actor, most creators have had when they've taken a piece of work to someone says, mm, no, you're like, okay. No, when you get that yes, is that feeling like what you yeah. say when you get the phone call and you freeze because you're like, yeah. hey, oh, this is happening. Whereas yeah. if that happened all the time, I feel like it just takes the, well, for me anyway, I feel like for my journey, I'm I'm happy with the, the yeses that come when they're meant to come. I don't need the yes every day. Mm. I'm happy with it being the, the durations that it's been because I know within those times of those durations, how much I've grown and the person that, that I was then, the person I am now, Oh yeah, is a lot better. Do you know what I mean? So if, I feel like if <clears> I had <throat> certain opportunities that I've had now, mm -hmm. if I had them when I was younger, I would have 
it would have almost oh. sabotaged everything. You know, I would have I would have ruined the opportunities in ways or, or not been ready for them, yeah. not been able yeah. to perform the ways I, I would want to. And so there's a growing aspect to that. But I don't know, I, I was just thinking for just kind of a little bit off of that. But um, when I was younger, uh, the reason I knew I wanted to do acting, man, is because mm. I was always the new guy. And I was yeah. extremely shy first when yeah. I was growing up. Couldn't talk to anybody, which is ironic. I have a podcast with my, my best friends now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but um, I would go to new schools all the time. So mm-hmm. I, I switched high schools nine times. I switched uh, middle schools I, five, six times. I don't mm-hmm. know, and it's only three, three years there, four years in high school, and then elementary as well. But I knew by the time I got to high school that, oh, I'm only going to be here for a little while. Mm-hmm. So I'd make a character, man. I, mm-hmm. And everywhere I went, it was a different character. One school I went to... Uh, I was about to be a professional surfer, you know, and so I like played that card, even though there's no beaches near me at that school, right? Yeah. The other school I went to, uh, and it was elements of stuff that I did, but it was a heightened version, you know? Yeah. So I'd create these characters. something, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. One was like MMA. And so I'd just tell these stories and create yeah. these, these personalities. And, and I knew I fell in love with that aspect of it because it's like, how long can I keep yeah. this on keep for? Keep this going, know? yeah. And then well, it's like, oh, three months, six months, all right, yeah. I got this, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. whatever it may be. And so I had fun with that. And and also, you know, my biggest escape, my my biggest passion was at the time, the thing I could do anywhere, no matter how mm. much I moved, was watching film, mm. you know? And then obviously it became working out. Mm. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's yeah. also part of my storytelling, yeah. you know? And, and stories that I want to tell. So I just had so much fun and, and discovering myself in that. And that's when I really Self realized- Self-discovery is important. Yeah. Mm. And that was one of the biggest things with acting I found yeah. is, is how much you learn about yourself. Yeah. Not only yeah. while- doing the things and playing mm. these characters, but from learning from other people mm, as well. Mm, like when I lived in Hollywood, um, I got my first apartment, I don't know how many years ago. Um, and, and I'm not there anymore, obviously, mm. but, um, I, uh, I used to dress differently for the day. Yeah. I would wear outfits. I would never wear to look like some kind of strange character just to see how people would react to me, man. And when I dressed like a, basically a bum or, or, you know, just a hit, like a hillbilly or whatever it was, the reactions I got from people were so different than if I, put on a suit that day yeah. or if I dressed in my normal workout attire. Yeah. Like, and so the reactions yeah. of people, and so I would just feed off of like how people react and watching them yeah. to different to situations, scenarios. Yeah. yeah. So I've, I've had fun doing stuff like that, but now I just love to people. Yeah, and, that, watch, you know? and that's the beautiful thing is that we get, we get to have fun, man. We get to yeah. create things. And I feel like that's the, the pressure is that we put on each other is the pressure for the yes. We should never put the pressure creating. I feel like the pressure of doing a soft tape, that's fun. I'm sitting in yeah. my house and I'm pretending to be someone. That's no stress. Yeah. The pressure that we put ourselves on is getting the yes because it's that yes that obviously is the opportunity that then leads to everything else. And I feel like it's like what Brian Cranston said. He said this amazing thing of like, he used to go into auditions like wanting the job. It was like, I want it, I want it, mm-hmm. I want it. And then he kind of just sat there one day and was like, Oh, let me just, I'm just going to go in there and I'm just going to create this. It's like a canvas. I'm just going to create this piece of work. I'm going to give it to you guys and I'm just going to go. And whatever happens after that is out of my hands. And he said, once he adapted that analogy to life, and I haven't said that word for word exactly how he said it, but he said, once he adapted that, that not I need, and just, this is who I am. Here you go. He's never been busier. Yeah. And he was like, he was going through audition, 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 and he just weren't booking. And it's because we just give off this hunger where it's like people can kind of see that more than what they really want to see, which yeah. is what you really can do. And it's yeah. just about that. It's about the self-discovery of going, I got this. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm cool. Like, and it's about doing that with everything. It's that with training. When you were younger and first started training, I guarantee you didn't think you'll be able to lift what you lift now. But oh, no, yeah. do you know what I mean? So it's like, it's about allowing yourself to have that time to grow and being like, okay, cool. This is a new adventure. I know I can get here. And it's just about believing that process. Yeah. And, and discipline, I feel like, yeah. yeah. And I feel like that's with everything now. If you can just believe the process, if you can be disciplined and have fun, that's my, that's my main thing I keep saying to people is like, yeah. we just need to have more fun, man. We need to stop taking ourselves so serious yeah. And just have more fun in life. That's you know it, what I mean? It's this this is one book we get to write. So I'm looking to write it as exciting and as fun as possible. Do you know what I mean? Amen. But yeah, no, trust. Hell yeah. Fun is important. <laughs> <laughs> Can't forget about the fun. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, it's it's it's, it's going to be a good year. Thank you so much for coming, Sean. That was an absolute pleasure. I had so much fun and... The Guy Ritchie stuff is amazing. I love hearing that. <laughs> and I cannot wait for The Covenant. That's going to be amazing. No, thank you. I appreciate it. It's been amazing coming on. Thank you. Hell yeah.
looking forward to seeing where you go in this in this uh, career. <sighs> I'm excited too, bro. I'm yeah, excited man. too. Let's do this. We All got the this. way. All the way, bro. <laughs> we got this, my brother. <laughs> Thank you for watching Studio 22. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And follow our socials at Studio 22 Podcast.